Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. Better, faster, and more scalable, the march to Exascale. Our presenter today is Dmitry Durnov, a software engineer here at Intel. And throughout his presentation, feel free to send in any questions you may have. We'll have some time for some Q&A at the end of the presentation. We'd also appreciate any feedback you may have as you leave the presentation today. There will be a survey that will pop up, and your feedback is appreciated. And there is an archive that, of this recording that will be available to you approximately 30 minutes after the end of the session. So with that, we will turn the time over to Dimitri. Hello. Uh, thank you, Michael, for introduction. So uh, my name is Mitri. I'm uh, Intel and Prep Product uh, Technical Lead, and today I'm going to tell you uh, what kind of challenges uh, we, we see with the new systems, uh, what kind of specific stuff we have to do. And uh, I will run quickly through a set of uh, products we have for uh, large machines, and uh, I'll describe the way development flow uh, may look like and the tool may help you. And I'm going to focus on uh, Intel MPI uh, specific uh, features which uh, we implemented in order to address the challenges that we see. So let's start here. So if you if you may know about MPI, MPI is an API standard and it's pretty, it had been in the field for a pretty long period of time, and uh, there, there are many applications which use MPI. And MPI is one of the key components uh, of the uh, development uh, for uh, large-scale machines and application running on them. Uh, there's a, that top 500 list. Uh, you may go to this uh, site and you see link on the bottom, and you may see that uh, there are very big amount of machines which are uh, based on Intel architecture, and uh, uh, there are many new machines based on Intel OmniPath uh, architecture as well, and uh, there are new machines uh, be being deployed pretty frequently, and uh, the list is growing. And um, MPI, MPI is uh, everywhere on the, uh, the, the machines, because uh, top of hand is uh, based on application which runs on top of the MPI. And uh, there is a set uh, of uh, the, the the largest machines so we have deal with, and uh, there are many others, uh, but uh, those are the largest ones uh, we are as an Intel MPI team have connection with. And uh, there are new machines uh, being deployed, and uh, we expect in the next year new machines as well. There's public information available that uh, there's a new machine is going to be deployed. And uh, what kind of uh, things I may say about them is that uh, number of nodes is growing rapidly, and uh, number of cores is growing rapidly as well. And uh, we uh, didn't uh, have many problems uh, uh, because uh, in the past, the uh, number of nodes wasn't that large, and the number of uh, uh, cores per node wasn't that large, and some pieces of MPI runtime uh, were not very well optimized, and uh, it was fine because, uh, from, for instance, memory consumption perspective, it wasn't an issue because you didn't uh, go to a scale where you would see it as a problem. And uh, startup time wasn't a very big issue because uh, it was... Uh, pretty fast, and uh, it wasn't that noticeable. And uh, point-to-point -point operations and collective operations uh, performance uh, wasn't that critical as well. But uh, with increased scale, uh, all these uh, pieces which uh, uh, in the past wasn't uh, weren't a problem now uh, is a very very big issue. Uh, for instance, uh, if you have some extra kilobyte or something like that per connection, then uh, you're in trouble. And uh, if you get extra overhead of uh, several microseconds on the critical path, then uh, your collective operation will be extremely slow. And the MPI is uh, getting getting more and, and more uh, time of the application run at scale because uh, with uh, uh, strong scaling, uh, you, you see that uh, at some point MPI uh, becomes the, the biggest 
one of the biggest parts of the application time. And uh, here's a list of other large machines uh, we have deal with. Uh, I would like to point that uh, they are pretty different because uh, some machines are Xeon based, some machines are Xeon Phi based, uh, and some of them are Omnipath uh, uh, powered and some powered uh, by uh, other solutions. But um, some of the uh, decisions we make on MPA runtime uh, development side are suitable for both, for uh, Xeon and Xeon Phi. And uh, we see is that if you are optimized uh, in a very good way for Xeon Phi architecture, it plays pretty well for Xeon as well. And uh, I will show several examples of the way it looks like. Okay, so here's uh, an agenda. So. Uh, First of all, uh, let's uh, talk about a, a bit about tools uh, we have for development. Because uh, when you uh, run application at scale uh, uh, and you don't have any feedback on the way uh, your application runs, uh, you, you can't find where a problem is. And uh, uh, in order to address that and help developers, uh, uh, we have uh, Intel Parallel Studio XC, and there are several editions. So uh, the, the minimalistic edition is Composer edition, where we have compiler and um, runtimes. Uh, I would say that uh, it's required in order to get uh, the best of, of a single node. And uh, after that, professional edition adds uh, several analy analysis tools like Intel VTune amplifier, uh, one of the best uh, tools uh, in order to understand what's going on on the node, uh, Intel Inspector and Intel Advisor. And Intel Advisor is a very good tool uh, which helps you to understand how well and how, how efficient uh, your vectorization uh, is in your application, and it helps you to understand how to optimize your application further. But it's a, a, a node level optimization. And what makes a cluster edition uh, by cluster edition is that we add several more components. Uh, it's an Intel MPA library. It's Intel Trace Analysis and Collector and uh, Intel Cluster Checker. And uh, here's short information about what Intel Trace Analyzer uh, and Collector is. Intel Trace Analyzer and Collector is uh, an event-based tool uh, for analysis of the MP application behavior. Uh, Events-based, it means that uh, it uh, uh, collects all MPI events uh, uh, you have in your application, all those events and information about them uh, uh, store it uh, in, in a trace file. And after that, you may open that uh, uh, trace file and see uh, the way application uh, looks like. Uh, and uh, uh, its uh, integration is very similar. You don't have to recompile the application in order to, to get uh, the tool running, uh, so you just uh, use your regular application and uh, uh, you set several nodes uh, in runtime and you get your profile. Uh, here's an example of the way its output looks like. Uh, uh, this is the, one of the most um, generic use cases for iTech. Uh, it's a uh, uh, time, uh, timeline analysis. And uh, you see there's a, a blue and red lines uh, and uh, Every line is a process, and uh, we have uh, that on, on a timeline, uh, its behavior described here. And blue lines uh, is uh, application time, so time spent outside of the MPI runtime. And uh, red uh, is MPI runtime. And uh, uh, here you see that there are some imbalance between uh, different uh, processes. So some are always on application uh, side, and others uh, spend a small amount of time on application time, jump into MPI, and they uh, wait for other processes. So you may see uh, messages uh, uh, which uh, applications send from one process to another. And uh, you may zoom in and uh, click on the uh, message in order to see what's message size and uh, what's the source, what's the destination. Uh, the fact that tool is event-based, uh, on one hand, is a very good thing because it collects everything, so you may uh, go to every detail you have on your application side. But on the other uh, side is a, is a drawback because uh, with larger scale, with uh, more processes, uh, uh, it may be 
uh, problematic to collect everything. So one of the ways to address that is to set different filters. Uh, so you may focus on, on a concrete uh, functionality, like I'm interested in point-to-point -point operations only, or I'm interested only in particular collective operations. So you will skip everything except that. But uh, still, uh, it's fundamentally not a scalable approach uh, when you uh, think about scaling more than 10,000 processes, because we had some success stories that, that uh, tool up to 8,000 ranks, but it's uh, their application specific. So it, that depends on how much uh, uh, MPA applications application have, so uh, what, what the size of the trace file would be, and so on. And uh, there are different uh, modes uh, and the ways to analyze uh, your trace file. Uh, for instance, uh, that uh, idealizer, and you may see uh, uh, imbalance. So you may see uh, how much time you spend uh, on MPI side uh, waiting for other ranks. But as I said, because of the fact that tool is not uh, that that scalable for extreme scaling, uh, we have uh, invested our time into uh, development of a tool which would be based on a different approach. Uh, and uh, uh, the, the tool uh, is application performance snapshot, and uh, it's uh, a mixture of uh, uh, features provided by in, uh, Intel VTune Analyzer. So you may get aggregated picture of what was going on on the node, and uh, it's uh, it, it provides information about MPI uh, uh, runtime behavior as well. So you may see. Uh, High-level description of your application. Uh, they're in a pretty similar way as iTech does that, but it doesn't collect everything. It's a more statistics-based, so it's aggregate everything as uh, as much as possible. Uh, but uh, it knows about MPI runtime uh, implementation, and it may analyze uh, how much time uh, was uh, spent on spinning. So how much time. Uh, applications spend uh, uh, in MPI runtime uh, doing nothing, and uh, we analyze that, uh, and uh, we may uh, suggest you how much of imbalance your application has. And one of the best things about that tool is that it's a very, very good starting point for analysis of your application behavior. So you run the tool, uh, you see high-level picture, and after that you understand that uh, should I try to optimize application side or I may think about MPI side. So if uh, uh, you want to optimize um, for uh, application uh, for application side, you may just run iTech. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, VTune on that uh, um, subset of the processes uh, where you see problem with, and or you may go to iTech and run. Um, uh, iTech uh, and focus on MPI communication pattern and see what was going on, uh, why uh, there's a, a such imbalance, uh, maybe caused by application or maybe caused by MPI. Anyway, uh, one of the main goals for that tool was to provide a tool which would scale and uh, address a big issue of the analysis of the application scale. And uh, uh, one of the most important components uh, is uh, Intel MPI uh, library. And uh, it, the product in the field for a pretty long time. And uh, one of the uh, key, um, uh, key features of the product is that uh, it's uh, possible to run Intel MPI on top of the different uh, fabrics, different uh, network technologies uh, without any recompilation, uh, without any uh, extra movement. You just uh, set your environment uh, and uh, your application is running. Uh, we provide uh, out-of-box uh, tuning for uh, new Intel architectures. So uh, we, with almost every product release, uh, we have uh, time for tuning of the library for uh, the latest architecture, uh, latest uh, CPUs plus uh, latest interconnects. And uh, we, we see that uh, in many cases, it allows our customers to get a very, very good out-of-the-box performance. Another thing is that uh, we provide a very good latency. Uh, it's one of the best, and uh, we see that it helps the applications. 
Uh, it's, uh, pro it provides uh, seamless integrations of uh, Intel tools like Intel Trace Analyzer. Uh, we have integration with VTune. Uh, we uh, take care of a lot of things users would have to set uh, through environment variables on some useful knobs uh, which helped uh, users uh, to get better experience and uh, we, we try to improve ease of use of our product as much as possible. And uh, we have a pretty huge library of uh, optimized collect operations uh, which are pretty critical uh, for many applications and uh, as I said, uh, we have uh, default tuning for them so it helps helps a lot. And uh, what we have right now? Right now, uh, we have one product. It's uh, Intel MPI 2018. Uh, it had been released for some time ago, but uh, by uh, Supercomputing 17 conference, uh, we uh, expect uh, to ship one extra branch in our product line. So we will continue Intel MPI 2018 uh, by to, Intel MPI 2018 update one. And the uh, main scope of the product is that we are going to address uh, uh, main uh, issues uh, and functionality our customers reported and uh, provide some minor changes uh, like improvement uh, for the most critical uh, functionality we got feedback on. And uh, this Intel MPA 2019, it's a major step forward for, for us and uh, main scope for that is uh, provide our customers a, a set of new features, uh, help them to migrate to new infrastructure, and uh, we would like to get as much as possible of the feedback on that technical preview. So at some point, it will become uh, Intel MPI 2019 beta, and after that, gold release. And so uh, what's new in Intel MPI 2018 update one? So as I mentioned, it's, uh, it's uh, it has a minor set of updates, but here is uh, one of the uh, main issues uh, we are trying to address. Uh, it's uh, related to startup time, because there's a large machines, uh, they require a uh, pretty huge amount of time on uh, process deployment, connection establishing, and so on. And uh, one of the phases uh, where we uh, spent time uh, in the past was uh, address exchange. So when every process starts on every node, it has to figure out the way to connect uh, to uh, each other. And uh, in the past, it was uh, based on a connection to a process manager. So every rank was connecting to a process manager. Uh, in our case, the process manager was uh, Hydra, so uh, it's uh, uh, when you start your uh, job on a cluster, we start, start agent on every node, and after that, that agent on the node uh, starts uh, all the all the ranks, um, and uh, there are some, something like parent-child relationship, and after that, all the ranks uh, had to communicate through. Uh, process manager interface, uh, that, that process manager infrastructure in order to get information about other ranks. And it took pretty pretty huge amount of time. And in order to address that, we implemented several startup uh, schemes. Um, and here is a, a, the way the latest uh, scheme looks like. So uh, in the beginning, uh, we uh, start our process manager in the way it was in the past. So we uh, start a, a set of agents, one agent per node, and uh, only one process per node uh, would uh, run through process manager. So it would go uh, as old way, but it would be only one rank per node. After that, uh, all the other master ranks uh, on each node would establish connection to each other, and uh, there would be a created shared memory uh, region which would be shared uh, across all, all the processes on the single node. And uh, uh, there's a master ranks would uh, call MPI uh, collective operation uh, all the fast um, all the fast method because uh, even if you 
put a process manager on top of the IP over IB or something like that, it won't be uh, very efficient. So uh, the way we do that now is that there's a master rank, and then the established connection, uh, uh, they may use uh, Intel Omnipath through P PSM2, so through uh, the lowest level uh, possible. And um, it allows us to uh, save a lot of time. And there is a set of the features on uh, uh, network level, on uh, OFI interface, uh, which allows to set up dynamic connections. But it's uh, outside of the MPI runtime. But I just would like to mention that dynamic connections uh, through OFI are possible as well. So by combining that startup mode, by setting PMI shared memory net mode, uh, and uh, enabling dynamic connection, we expect that uh, most of the issues with startup time uh, would be addressed uh, on MP runtime level. And uh, the biggest thing uh, we're working right now is that Intel MPI 2019 technical preview. And the uh, main reasons why we started all that uh, development is that uh, we saw that uh, with a larger scale our old infrastructure, which is a heart of Intel MPI 2018, wasn't suitable for all scenarios. Uh, there were many instructions on the critical path. We did uh, a lot of optimizations for that, but we see that at some point uh, we can't go further. And uh, we started to think how to optimize it uh, uh, to the next level and have a small number of instructions on the critical path. And we set it as one of the goals. Also, we see that uh, collective operation infrastructure wasn't flexible enough, so we uh, couldn't integrate easily uh, very uh, highly, highly optimized collectives which would use a low-level transport. Uh, we could do that, but uh, its maintenance and integration cost would be very high. And we wanted to have a better way uh, to integrate that, so uh, we, we could could get uh, low latency for collective operations as well. Uh, another side of the story is that we wanted to have uh, there there a small memory footprint, so uh, we were trying to get rid of the extra allocations and uh, any structures which would depend on uh, number of ranks if it would be possible. And uh, we saw that uh, there was an increased demand and improvement for hybrid program models, MPI uh, plus OpenMP or MPI plus threads, uh, for six threads. Uh, those are two, uh, the most important um, models we asked for. And uh, the, the technical preview, uh, we have moved it uh, to a new MPI-CH4 uh, infrastructure. Uh, it's a code base which was uh, co-developed uh, uh, by Intel and Argon, and uh, our team took part in that, in, in that development as well. And uh, uh, we have added new collective operations infrastructure, which is uh, more flexible. And uh, we have added a uh, new uh, model for hybrid program models, which allows to get uh, very good uh, benefits. And uh, new experimental shared memories in place as well. So let's go through details. And uh, here is a short set of what uh, what's the main difference uh, between uh, old infrastructure, new infrastructure we have migrated for, uh, for to. And uh, uh, one of the key components is a reduction of number of instructions on the critical path. Uh, old infrastructure, which uh, I referenced to here as uh, CH3, uh, was mostly based on the invocation of the function, of, uh, function calls on, on the critical path. So there were several layers. And the new infrastructure, it's possible to inline significantly more of the code, so uh, the path was uh, significantly re reused. And uh, it's OFI based, so OFI net mode is uh, an allocate component, and uh, now we optimize one net mode 
uh, before the, that we had a very very big amount of uh, different net modes and in order to optimize something we had to run through every net mode and uh, uh, spend time optimization for that now we have one main net mode it's OFI and uh, uh, we are optimized uh, on top of OFI and here are several goods about OFI and why is it good for NPI runtime. One of the main things here is that uh, there is a very good matching between NPI primitives and uh, OFI primitives. So OFI, uh, if you don't know about that, is a open fabric interface. Uh, it was um, uh, prepared in the scope of Open Fabric Alliance, Open Fabric the group. Uh, and it's, it's uh, there's a pretty huge community around that, and uh, one of the biggest advantages for runtime developers is that uh, there's a pretty huge amount of primitives uh, which could be mapped uh, almost directly to your needs. And here is a short example of the way uh, OFI primitives map to MPI primitives. And uh, there's a very good matching, as I said. And uh, what it means is that uh, it means that uh, there's a very small amount of uh, overheads uh, from the structures preparation uh, and so on. So you do not that big amount of things, and uh, you go directly to the client. And uh, here's an example of the way uh, our stack looks like uh, on top of the OPA. So uh, test line uh, is a current product in OFI 2018 over OFI over PSM. So it's a OFI and PSM2 provider. And the uh, main thing I, I would like to focus here is the number of instructions on MPI runtime level. So the introduction of the Intel MPI 2019 uh, technical preview, uh, we have reduced the number of instructions on the MPI side, but it's still work in progress, and uh, there are several pieces left. So now, uh, we use more features uh, uh, from Modify, and, uh, not, and not everything is yet optimized on the MPI runtime side. And uh, according to the latest results, uh, we may uh, expect uh, the, the, the latest line you see here. So we expect that number of instructions are going down. And uh, we see that it uh, new code base uh, provides us very, very good potential. And here's the way our Intel MPI 2018 uh, infrastructure looks like. I just would like to show what kind of main difference uh, that shift to OFI infrastructure means. So as I mentioned in the past, we had a set of the so-called net modes. Uh, it's a uh, term from uh, NPR runtime architecture. So we have several layers. It's a abstract device interface, it, and uh, in old code base, it's called CH3. Uh, there was channels level, but uh, let's call that uh, it's an ADI one level. And after that, uh, there was that net mode level. And uh, one of the biggest features of that is that for uh, new every new technology we had to support, uh, there was no any guarantee that all Net mode would be very suitable, so we had some kind of a zoo of as a net mode, and uh, it wasn't always clear how to map that in a very good way. So we uh, did a lot of uh, stuff for uh, optimizing for particular uh, technology and selecting that out of the box. So we use a when we run on top of. Uh, uh, OPA would get, uh, by default, the best uh, path we have. And uh, if they run on top of the uh, EDR, they would get the best we have uh, by the moment. Uh, but anyway, it was uh, a set of the net modes. So if we wanted to optimize uh, something uh, on the critical path, we had to run through whole stack. So if we optimized for OPA, we had to go through ADI optimization. After that, go to net mode optimization. Let's go for, for TMI optimization. And um, if we want to optimize for EDR, we had that DAPL uh, net mode or OFI net mode. And it wasn't always clear uh, what's the best strategy here. And at some point, we introduced OFI support into Intel MPI 2018. And uh, the main message here is that uh, the in introduction of the OFI, uh, it helped uh, us to cover uh, all the main technologies available and uh, technologies we wanted to have uh, in, in, in the product. And 
so there are some kind of a shift towards that one net mode uh, for everything. And uh, the Intel MPI 2019, uh, uh, our decision was to move completely to OFI infrastructure. So main difference here, if you compare 2018 uh, versus 2019, is that instead of net modes, uh, m multiple net modes, now we have one main net mode and it's OFI net mode. And uh, instead of uh, net modes for every uh, technology, now we have OFI providers. So uh, it's a, a community-driven uh, library. It's a Libfabric library which implements OFI API. And uh, th then this uh, implement uh, the, the providers. And uh, as soon as it's uh, in a good shape, you may just uh, take uh, Intel API and uh, run on top of OFI. So minimal amount of changes required on the NPI runtime side uh, right now. And uh, next thing uh, I would like to highlight is uh, our new collective operations infrastructure. Uh, so we migrate in, uh, to a new uh, decision tree architecture and uh, maybe it won't be visible to customers in the beginning but uh, we expect that uh, we will do it as flexible as possible and we would help uh, our customers to adjust library for their needs uh, in an easier way. Uh, what we have right now when you run MPI library on a cluster is that uh, you may expect that uh, because of the fact that uh, Intel MPI library was optimized for the latest uh, Intel uh, platform, so CPU plus the interconnect, uh, it may provide you very good performance out of the box. But in some cases, uh, our default tuning is not uh, applicable uh, to application. Uh, it doesn't allow to get all benefits. And uh, here we uh, suggest users to use our MPI tuner uh, tool, which is part of the product, uh, part of the Intel MPI product. And, uh, it would help you to uh, get a new configuration for a library, uh, which uh, would uh, get the best of the configuration uh, of your cluster. Uh, but in some cases, uh, people may play with uh, our knobs manually. And here's an example of uh, new infrastructure looks like if you want to, to use uh, our knobs directly. Uh, so we introduced a uh, two-level scheme. Uh, it's a composition level, uh, preset level, uh, there's network level, and there's node level. So composition means uh, uh, something like high level strategy of the uh, collective operation implementation. Uh, if you're aware of what collective operation, uh, suppose you're aware of collective operations uh, look like inside, uh, in most cases it's uh, some kind of the combination of the node level and network level uh, collective operation. For instance, if you uh, implement all reduce operation, you may do that in a way that you run reduction inside, uh, inside a node first, after that you would uh, run all reduce on the routes, uh, so one run uh, on the node uh, collects everything from everyone. Uh, and after that, you may uh, run broadcast inside the node. So it's a uh, free phase scheme. And it's one of the way uh, all reuse could be implemented. So we uh, call it a composition right now. And there are different ways, like you could do a simple uh, MPR all reuse by uh, combining MPR reduce plus MPR broadcast. And uh, there are different uh, benefits you may get from that. Uh, but uh, main idea here is that there are several ways on a high level how to implement collective operation. And uh, this is uh, controlled by that uh, IMPI adjust or reuse competition. Uh, and on a network level, uh, as it's, uh, it may, may be clear from the name, it's a control for uh, network phase. So when your composition selects that now we have to run collective operation on the network side, uh, it would run through that uh, logic and selects uh, what you have uh, in a decision tree for a network, or uh, if you adjusted that, it would generate a tree out of your adjust uh, or reduce network environment variable. And we have node level. So if you run something and uh, at some 
and uh, there's a phase with the node level, then uh, this, uh, this is controlled for that. And uh, we still uh, support the uh, old controls we had in Intel MPI 2018. Uh, we had that IMPI just overduce, and uh, it, it's some kind of the uh, combination of the composition and uh, network and node level um, uh, collector operation selection. We mapped uh, all our collectors we had in the uh, Intel MPI 2018 to that new infrastructure. And uh, you uh, may expect that uh, your old knobs uh, would behave in a similar way as before. But uh, if you want to get the best of the library, uh, here's a set of the knobs if you want to play manually. Or as, as I suggested earlier, uh, MPA tuner is now a way uh, to get to an automated way. Okay, and uh, here's an example of uh, new collect operations. Uh, uh, new code base allows us to easily integrate a uh, pretty custom uh, solution uh, on the collect operation implementation level. Uh, one of the things we implemented in the technical preview is uh, a set of direct collectors. So we go directly to OFI as soon as possible. And uh, here's an example of the way there's a new collective behavior on the Xeon file. We see that it helps to uh, into Xeon as well, but uh, the biggest benefit we see is uh, on the Xeon file. And one of the biggest advantages here is that it's a minimized critical path during the um, collective operation. So every hope you have in your collective algorithm gets uh, uh, more efficient. And uh, this is an example. Uh, another big step forward for us is uh, enhanced support for hybrid program models. And it's uh, an extension of uh, MPI thread multiple uh, mode uh, of uh, MPI uh, standard. So when you run that MPI init thread, uh, you, you can specify four models uh, and uh, thread single funneled. Um, uh, and uh, MPI thread multiple means that uh, every thread may um, enter MPI runtime at any moment. And uh, we have introduced extension to that. So the, uh, a set of some uh, rules, uh, you may get uh, completely lockless uh, behavior of your uh, thread. So every thread may go uh, down to MPI runtime and go from the top of the MPI runtime down to um, hardware about any sterilization. And uh, here's a, just a list of the several benefits you may get. Uh, and uh, full stack for uh, Intel OmniPath uh, is going to be available with OmniPath Fabric uh, software. It's uh, short for, uh, stands for uh, IFS, IFS 10.5. And actually, you may download that, it's, it's available. And it requires OFI 1.5.0. And in general, we uh, recommend uh, to use the latest OFI. The Intel MPI 2019, uh, OFI 1.5.0 is a minimal requirement uh, for, for the library. And here is a short description of the way it looks like. So uh, you have your application. And on application, we have uh, several threads. And every thread goes down. Um, to the hardware. And uh, on OFI level, when we run through it level, it's uh, implementation is based on OFI scale one point. Uh, and uh, by uh, independent hardware context, it's a hardware context from all OPA. So it's completely lockless if you follow the rules. And here is an example uh, of the way it looks like with a uh, real application. Uh, now, one of the main uh, points here is that uh, the old infrastructure, when you are trying to call uh, MPI runtime from several threads, uh, you had a global lock. And uh, uh, it didn't play well every time. And uh, here you see that uh, there, there are a big drop um, if you compare new the technical preview uh, in multi-threaded mode uh, versus uh, our old infrastructure in multi-threaded mode. 
and uh, now it scales uh, with the uh, number of threads. Uh, so uh, because of the lack uh, uh, and uh, complete removal of the uh, serialization of critical path. Um, and uh, one of the goals we, we had is that we would like to get uh, same efficiency uh, as you would have with multiple uh, ranks, uh, the one rank and multiple threads. And that's uh, so one of the goals here. And here's a short summary of the uh, key features of the Intel MPA 2019. So it's based on your uh, CH4 architecture, and uh, it provides us very good potential for optimization. So we have enabled a, a set of the features uh, which were provided by that infrastructure, and uh, they're still work in progress. And we expect to get uh, a small number of instructions on the critical path by next releases of the Intel MPA 2019. Uh, we have added new collective operations infrastructure. Uh, it's a new decision uh, tree logic and uh, that layered uh, infrastructure with composition, network, and node. And uh, we have implemented a set of the direct collectives which go down to OFI as soon as possible and we see benefits, especially on KNL. Uh, we have introduced a new uh, extension for uh, threading model. So if you now have MPI plus OpenMP uh, with a small set of modifications on the application level, you may get completely lockless path. And uh, we have new shared memory experimental uh, transport, uh, which is highly optimized for Intel architectures, but it's uh, it's in its early phase and uh, it's experimental. But uh, if you're interested, we would like to get feedback on its behavior as well. And uh, final thing is that uh, it's going to be available uh, in the same package where you would find uh, Intel MPA 2018 update one. So both uh, have to be part of the Intel Parallels 2DXC cluster edition, uh, 2018 update one. And uh, we expect that uh, to be released very soon. And uh, the way you may get access to our tools, uh, there, there's commercial support, uh, but you may get them for free as well. So uh, there's a community licensing model uh, where you just get uh, all our tools for free, uh, and you may still get support through different forums and uh, get support. But um, yeah, if you want uh, a full support, uh, there's a uh, commercial version available. And that was all from my side. So if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them here. So Mike, do we have any anything? Yes, uh, Dimitri, thanks for the presentation. We do have a little bit of time. Um, we've got several questions that have come in. So we will um, get to as many of these as we can. Uh, first question is with ITAC, can you get information similar to VTune Amplifier? For instance, can I see exactly what line of code is spending how much time? As far as I remember, it uh, was possible to instrument the code in a way that uh, you would see it in ITAC trace, but uh, uh, it would be it would lead to very high overhead. So technically it's possible even to add your own marker inside your application and uh, it would be, I think, the best option if you would like to see uh, MPI uh, runtime details uh, and uh, some information about application phase uh, where you're running. But uh, does that full instrumentation of every function, uh, it would lead to a pretty huge overhead. Uh, once again, it's an event-based tool. It collects everything, so you may expect that if you uh, fun ha have very big amount of function invocations, then you would get that everything uh, I inside the trace and uh, its size would grow and uh, it would lead to overhead. Because the uh, Intel VTune is a uh, uh, sa sample base, so it's uh, uh, it uses the PMU features of the CPUs and uh, it's a very non-intrusive uh, way, so uh, 
you don't drive uh, event collection by software. It's driven by hardware, and it runs in parallel with your applications out of the head. Moreover, I would say that if your scale is not very, very big, then uh, we have done some job uh, with integration of the NPR runtime awareness into VTune. So if you run VTune on the, on the node, uh, and uh, your application uh, runs uh, the NPR runtime, then Vtune may say you how much time uh, of, spin, uh, of spinning you had. So uh, we have added uh, information about which pieces of our, uh, for instance, Intel NPR runtime re responsible for uh, for spinning. And if uh, Vtune sees that uh, there is a set of samples of the, in these regions, it would interpret that as a spinning time and it would suggest that uh, maybe there is an imbalance. So I would recommend, uh, if you still want to use iTag, uh, to add your own instrumentation. Uh, please uh, check uh, iTag documentation and see the way you may in, uh, in, integrate your own markers so you would see pieces of the application uh, in more detail. Or go to uh, Bitune, which would uh, lead to a small amount of overhead uh, but it would be um, sample-based, so um, maybe precision won't be uh, that good as uh, with iTech, but if your functions are pretty, pretty big and you call them frequently, then if you find the statistics, and uh, there are a set of features on the hardware level which allows to get their high precision. So I would definitely recommend to try with you uh, for uh, information about the application side. Okay. Is RDMA used with MPI communications in OPA? Uh, actually, it's under the hood of the PSM too. So uh, when we uh, run MPI on top of the OPA, our main path is uh, over OFI uh, PSM2 provider or TMI. So when we switch to RDMA mode, uh, we have that in our old code base, we have IMPI, uh, OFI, RDMA, uh, direct, er, direct RMA, if I remember. And uh, what it does is that it maps to, uh, maps NPI pool operation to OFI write, but uh, it would map to point-to-point -point operation on the PSM2 level, but inside it would uh, organize uh, RDMA write uh, transfer, so there would be handshake and after that uh, argument operation, but on the lower level. Technically, it's possible to use verbs as well uh, on top of the OPA, and uh, the, the latest stack, uh, there was uh, optimization for verbs, so uh, RDMA would be available to uh, use us to verbs users as well. Uh, but main path is a point-to-point -point and RDMA inside, so that's what we have right now. Okay. In the hybrid model you showed, a thread calls MPI. How are you launching this thread? It's application side. So uh, one of the ways and the most common ways is that you have application which uh, would call MPI from OpenMP. Uh, so the main modification you would have to do on application side is that uh, each uh, thread has to call uh, MPI on a different communicator. It's one of the biggest change uh, you would have to have. So, for instance, if you have uh, one rank and uh, four OpenMP threads, then you would have to have four communicators, and each thread would have to uh, call uh, MPI only from uh, its own communicator. So the, the, we won't share a, any structures in that case. So it's MPI plus OpenMP. But it's possible to run uh, MPI plus threads. Uh, the only thing is that uh, you would have to assign thread to a communicator through InfoK. Uh, there's going to be a, a available documentation with uh, Intel MPI 2019 uh, technical preview, and uh, you would see all those examples. But technically, uh, all of the threads are application-level threads. So right now, we don't have any extra threads on MPI runtime level. And uh, our initial step is uh, to reuse uh, application-level threads. Okay. 
Will APS work on our local cluster? And if so, is there a sample application for it? To be honest, I don't remember that sample. But uh, I be believe that we should have several uh, knowledge base articles uh, with examples how to run that. Because uh, we did that uh, definitely. So I, I may try to uh, look for those examples and uh, I may send it to you, Michael, and uh, we may share that later if it's okay, okay as well. So APS uh, example, right? So APS um, use yes. case. Uh, is OFI net mode completely independent or outside uh, DAPL and OFA in, in the Intel MPI? It's a, uh, in Intel MPI 2018, it's a, uh, let me just switch to that. Uh, Okay, so in Intel MPA 2018 infrastructure, it's a, a separate net mode. So uh, it's it lives in parallel and it's fully independent of the other net modes. So it it doesn't reuse any uh, piece of the other net modes we have. So it lives its own life. And uh, with uh, Intel MPA 2019, it's going to be the only net mode available. Uh, searching through some of these questions. Here's one. How does this new networking affect co-arrays slash UPC? Uh, could you please rephrase the question? So what? It means support because uh, we don't have uh, any official runtime product around that UPC. So could you please rephrase the question? What what's the main? All right, if you're able to rephrase it, okay, we can move on to the next one then. Um, I may mention that uh, outside of the MPI runtime, we have uh, support for OpenShmuel on ITEC level, uh, but uh, we don't have any. Uh, product around this runtime. So you, you may run them. Uh, there, uh, for instance, uh, OpenShmem uh, was uh, enhanced, so now it has OFI puff as well. We invested uh, some time into enhancement of global arrays. So right now, global arrays may run on top of OFI as well. We have invested into Sharm++ as well, and uh, Sharm++ uh, now runs on top of OFI as well. And uh, but we don't have products. Uh, NPR runtime is the main product we have uh, for distributed programming models. Okay, um, this is a, a question as much as of a comment. Uh, I'm saying it would be great if we could combine the sampling from VTune for each rank into a coherent dashboard for the entire MPI application. That's one of the on goals. That? APS. APS was uh, intended for, but uh, now its picture is more uh, of that they're, they're high level. So you don't have that aggregated timeline. Uh, you may uh, run MP application uh, and uh, add um, VTune, so it would generate uh, traces, uh, I mean VTune level traces for every rank and it would uh, place a trace uh, on, on a node. So technically, it's possible uh, to run through the nodes. Uh, and if you know that uh, there was that, uh, for instance, imbalance and some application, so some rank uh, would take uh, too much uh, too much time on application side. So it means that it spends small amount of time on NPR runtime level. And uh, our Suggestion is that if you see such situation, then we recommend to see uh, that application, that particular rank with Vtune. And uh, as far as I remember, IPS allows you to see that um, list of the ranks for analysis. But uh, we don't have that aggregated timeline. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, rephrasing of the previous question in this. Uh, could be our last one. Um, question is, will this infrastructure speed up co-arrays UPC? 
uh, or does the new infrastructure help with the underlying MPI co-array calls? I see. I see. So uh, talking about core of Fortran uh, support, uh, what we have at Intel is that uh, core A runtime is part of the compiler and it uses MPI under the hood. And the uh, main uh, scenario and the main way core A uses MPI is, is it uses uh, uh, MPI uh, RMA. So it uses uh, the remote memory access operations uh, and uh, this new uh, code base uh, it's more optimized so we, we expect that uh, it would be not worse than uh, when you enable a direct RMA so technically you may try to run core and uh, enable direct RMA with uh, Intel MPI 2018 uh, but with 2019, it's going to be enabled by default. And um, so we'll, I don't have any numbers right now, but uh, I would say that uh, we have uh, optimizations for RMA path as well, and uh, it may lead potentially to optimization for core array as well. But for UPC, we didn't uh, didn't have any any collaboration here, as far as I remember. Core is, uh, it's clear because it's part of the uh, Intel compiler and we have that now uh, stack of the products, but uh, wouldn't have UPC. All right. Well, thank you, Dimitri, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We hope um, you enjoyed the presentation. And again, the archive will be ready here shortly, uh, about 30 minutes or so. And please fill out the survey to provide us feedback um, on the webinar. And we appreciate everyone attending. Thank you everyone, and we'll see you at another webinar soon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.